Malcolm, on your trip abroad, you said you sense a feeling of great brotherhood and that conceivably you would be working toward integration in this country now. At least this is what you're reported to have said. Have you any comment on it? I don't think that I ever uh, mentioned anything about working toward integration. Uh, if I recall, I I'm, I'm pointed out that while I was at Mecca making the pilgrimage, the, I spoke about the brotherhood that existed at all levels and among all people who were there on that Hajj who had accepted the religion of Islam. And I pointed out that uh, for what it had done, what the religion of Islam had done for those people over there, despite their complexion differences, that it would probably uh, do America well to study the religion of Islam and perhaps it could drive some of, some of the racism from this society as it has driven racism from the Muslim society. Drive it. Aiming for this goal? Well, I, don't, I can't say that the current integration drive is aiming for that goal because it hasn't realized the goal in any state. It, they haven't even got integration right here in New York City. You have worse integration problems in the North than they have in the South. So if it doesn't work in, if, if you can't bring about integration in New York City as international, cosmopolitan, up-to-date as it's supposed to be, you will never get integration anywhere else in the country. Malcolm, have your experiences with uh, white-skinned Muslims in... Uh, Africa and the Middle East made you feel that uh, relations between Negroes and whites who are not Muslims is any more possible? Uh, when I was in on the pilgrimage I had close contact with Muslims whose skin would in America be classified as white and with Muslims who themselves would be classified as white in America. But these particular Muslims didn't call themselves white. They looked upon themselves as human beings, as part of the human family, and therefore they looked upon all other segments of the human family as part of that same family. Well, now, uh, they had a different look or a different air or a different attitude than that which is uh, reflected in the uh, attitude of the man in America who calls himself white. So I said that if uh, Islam had done, this, done that for them, Perhaps if the white man in America would study Islam, perhaps it could do the same thing for him. I think what a lot of people are interested in, Malcolm, is whether this experience has made you feel that, that your feelings have changed, that, uh, that the animosity you have expressed in the past toward all whites. There's one the thing that I want to make cl clear. No matter how much respect, no matter how much... Uh, uh, recognition whites show toward me as far as i'm concerned as long as that same respect and recognition is not shown toward every one of our people in this country it doesn't exist for me Malcolm, just Are you prepared to go into the United Nations at this point and ask that charges be brought against the United States for its treatment of American Negroes? Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Please. I think you're right in my camera. The audience will have to be quiet. <laughs> uh, yes, the, as I pointed out when I was in, during my traveling, that nations look, African nations and Asian nations and Latin American nations look very hypocritical when they stand up in the United Nations condemning the racist practices of South Africa and that which is practiced by Portugal and Angola and saying nothing in the UN about the racist practices uh, that are, that are uh, manifest every day against Negroes in this society. Even in South Africa, those Africans uh, aren't faced with bayonets and aren't faced with police dogs. And I, when I was in Beirut, I saw a picture on the front page of a Negro being beaten in Tennessee on the front page of the paper in Beirut. When I got to Cairo, I saw the same picture of a Negro being beaten in Tennessee. When I got to Lagos, I saw the same picture. So uh, with these African nations knowing the brutality that is inflicted upon black people in this country, simply because those black people are trying to get what the Supreme Court said they were supposed to have 10 years ago, I, I would be not a man. If I was in a position to bring it in front of the United Nations and didn't do so, I wouldn't be a man. Malcolm, do you intend to lead the charge uh, in the United Nations? Well, I, I find that to say you're going to lead something creates a lot of hostility, division, jealousy, and envy. Uh, I hope to, to work with any group of leaders or any group of organizations to do whatever is necessary 
to see that this problem is brought before the United Nations. Have you had any commitment from any nations in Africa to support your I move? Will, I would rather not say at this time, but one thing I found in my travels, all of them look at, upon us as their long-lost brother. You realize the implication is that you have had such commitments when you say... This is your interpretation of what I said. Uh, 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 one thing that I found in all of my travels was that uh, all of the Africans, not only the Africans, but the Asians and the Muslims, look upon us as their long-lost brothers. And America had actually tricked many of them uh, into uh, a hands-off policy by giving them the impression that she was honestly trying to do something to solve the problem. My argument over there was designed to prove that it is impossible for the United States government to solve the race problem. It's impossible for, for a government which has uh, uh, 16 senatorial committees over which 10 are chairman by southern segregationists and 20 uh, congressional committees over which uh, Twelve are chairman by Southern segregationists. This is a segregationist, racist government that's controlled by people from the South. They can't solve the race problem. Do you intend to take any part in the uh, political campaign this fall? We intend to take part in everything that will get results uh, at uh, eliminating the injustices that uh, our people are confronted with in this country. Politically, economically, anything. Will you support uh, candidates of either of the two parties? We'd rather not say at this time. Are you prepared to work with some of the leaders of the other civil rights organizations? Certainly. Certainly. We will work with any uh, groups, organizations, or leaders in any way, as long as it's genuinely designed to get results. And any action on the civil rights bill, how will this affect the direction of your movement? Any action on the civil rights bill? Well, I'm surprised that all of these uh, civil rights groups combined haven't converged on Washington long before now. I'm surprised. If they took all the time and the expense of going down last year, singing their songs and things of that sort, before they even started the filibuster, I'm surprised that they have permitted the filibuster to go on as long as it has and have, and have not taken any concrete actions to bring it to a halt. Would you join another march to Washington? Oh, yes. You didn't last year, did you? I didn't last year because I was a part of the black Muslim movement, which has as its policy... Uh, 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 a hands-off attitude in becoming involved in any phase of the struggle of the so-called Negro in this country for what he feels are his rights. And uh, my disassociation from that particular religious group gives me complete freedom to involve myself in anything that I honestly and sincerely feel is, is uh, designed to get results. How would you say this pilgrimage to Mecca has altered the course of your relations with the movement of Elijah Muhammad? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not here to discuss the movement of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in any way. I would say this, that uh, uh, the pilgrimage at Mecca is an, is an anthropologist, would be an anthropologist paradise, because it's the only event and the only spot on earth that has every specimen of humanity in the same place at the same time, uh, practicing brotherhood and in harmony. It's the only place where I've ever seen brotherhood practiced by people of all races, of all, uh, of everything. Has this been a religious experience? Of Definitely, I went uh, because of my religious beliefs, and I think that I have a better understanding of my religion. I, I was a state guest while I was there for 12 days of Prince uh, Faisal, who was the present leader of the government. He gave me, he made, uh, he made everything available to me to give me every opportunity to get a better understanding of the religion of Islam. Uh, when I first got there, I was in a compound because it wasn't known that I was there. And once they found out I was there, they put me in a, in a suite at the Jeddah Palace Hotel, gave me a, a car with a chauffeur and a, a mutawif who could speak Arabic and take me wherever I wanted. I could go back and forth between Mecca and Jeddah every night if it was my desire. I have never been given more hospitality and treated with more brotherhood than I was treated in Arabia by the, by the Muslims there. Does your new beard have any religious significance? No, not particularly, but I do think that you'll find black people uh, in America as they strive to throw off the shackles of, of uh, mental colonialism will also probably reflect uh, uh, an effort to, show, to, to uh, throw off the shackles of uh, cultural colonialism and they may begin to reflect desires of their own, with standards of their own. Malcolm, what...
specific concrete move would you make that other civil rights leaders have not made to ensure passage of this civil rights bill? Well, I frankly believe, sir, that it's out of the, it's not within the heart or conscience or ability. But they're rope, they're becoming frustrated, they're becoming disillusioned, they're becoming disenchanted, and it's up to the government to do something to it. To the, it's up to the government to do something about the condition. Please don't do that applauding. Uh, I'm going to keep going. Here, I have a little bit more. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Malcolm, your more controversial remarks was uh, a call for black people to get rifles and form rifle clubs sometime back. Do you still favor that I, for self-defense? I, I, I don't see why that should be controversial. I think that if white people found themselves the victim of the same kind of brutality that black people in this country face, and they saw that the government was either unwilling or unable to protect them, that the intelligence on the part of the whites would make them get some rifles and shotguns and protect themselves. Now, Negroes are developing some kind of intellectual maturity too. And they can see that by having waited upon the government to protect them has been a, a wait that has been uh, in vain. So uh, any of them who live in areas where the government is not able to do its job, then we do have to get together and do a job of protecting ourselves. I ask you another question that may seem a little silly, but it's the question of the names. I think a lot of people are confused by the new Arabic name, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. This is always, I've always uh, had the name on my passport, Malik uh, El Shabazz, only I only used it in the Muslim world. Well, Hajj is a title that is given to any Muslim who makes the pilgrimage to Mecca during the official Hajj season. Well, are you, will you now use Shabazz and drop X? I'll probably continue to use Malcolm X because, and I'll probably use it as long as the situation that produced it exists. <laughs> we, you don't feel you don't feel that Shabazz takes the place of X. Uh, uh, my going to Mecca and going into the Muslim world, into the African world, and being recognized and accepted as a Muslim and as a brother. Uh, may solve the problem for me personally. But I uh, personally feel that my personal problem is never solved as long as the problem is not solved for all of our people in this country. So I remain Malcolm X as long as there is a need to protest and struggle and fight against the injustices that our people are involved in in this country. When Cassius Clay was in Accra, he was quoted as saying some things that were um, not so friendly. Uh, did you have anything to say about that? I don't know anything about what he said. I'm, I'm always reluctant to believe what I read in the newspaper that one black man supposedly said about another black man. Well, and if I have anything at all to say about Cassius, I'll say it to him. <laughs> well, it's, it's just that he said people weren't listening to you anymore. Do you think that's true? As I said, I, I, if I have anything to say about him, I'll say it to him. Uh, he's a person who listens. He talks and he listens. Do you still consider him a friend? Yes, I consider all of our people my friend. And usually those who act unfriendly are only reflecting the poison that someone else has put in them. Just one other one, and that's what are you going to do about the traffic ticket? The traffic ticket? Yeah. Well, no, I'm going to appear in court on it. Uh, when? I don't know. I, uh, I had left. Uh, the lawyer was supposed to have appeared in court for me on the 19th of May. And from what I understand, he didn't, and it created a lot of controversy. Uh, I never was speeding. It was, a, it was a segregationist police officer or an integrationist. I don't know which one. <laughs> and uh, he knew who I was. He recognized who I was and stopped me on that, on that pretext. And I just sat there. I didn't even talk to him. I just gave him my license and sat there because I figured that he might have been up to something else, you know. 
Thanks very much. You're welcome.